Today in Music History, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the life and music of John Bon Jovi. John Francis Bon Jovi Jr. was born March 2, 1962 in Perth Amboy, in New Jersey. John spent most of his childhood skipping school, delivering newspapers, and basically trying to stay out of trouble. In his early teens, John played in numerous local bands, the Atlantic City Expressway, and John Bon Jovi and the Wild Ones. Keeping his nose to the proverbial grindstone, John hung around his cousin's New York City studio, known then as the Power Station. While there, John swept floors, fetched coffee, soaked up the atmosphere, and honed his skills. His chance finally came at the age of just 17, when disco producer Miko was putting together a Star Wars Christmas album and pegged John to sing lead vocals on one of the tracks. A shout out to his cousin and studio co-owner Tony Bon Jovi for the break. This is what is known in the biz as right place, right time. John's songwriting skills began to show at an early age and in June of 1982, at just barely 20 years old, John recorded a song called Runaway with a handful of polished studio musicians. John shopped the track around himself to labels and record companies. They all passed. Undaunted, John peddled the track himself and ended up having the song included on a then-famous New York radio station's local artist compilation record. Interest in John spiked and he was offered a recording contract with Mercury Records. Calling out to old friend and keyboardist David Bryan, the band quickly came together and the recording process started almost immediately. January 1984, Bon Jovi, the self-titled record, is released. It included Runaway and one of the first compositions John Bon Jovi and Richie Sambora would pen, titled Burning for Love. March 1985 saw the release of the almost unnoticed 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Slippery When Wet is released in August of 1986 and gave the boys their first number one record on the U.S. Billboard charts. The songs Living on a Prayer and You Give Love a Bad Name both landed on the U.S. singles charts at number one and catapulted the band into the spotlight as a huge international rock outfit. Not bad for a few punks from New Jersey. The third record, simply titled New Jersey, saw the band's musical ambitions grow, while songs like Bad Medicine and Born to Be My Baby had the old spark for stadium screams. John and Richie wanted to explore deeper sounds and flex their songwriting muscle. I'll Be There For You and Homebound Train found John and Richie stepping out of the box and cementing themselves and the band as one of the all-time greatest pop rock bands of the decade and beyond. As the 1990s arrived, John Bon Jovi and Richie Sambora now physically and mentally spent from years of non-stop working and touring wouldn't lay down their guns just yet. They went ahead and shared their creativity and knowledge in various other ways, producing records and writing songs for artists like Cher and Alice Cooper, just to name a few. John also took to acting, writing songs for solo projects and movie soundtracks. Never out of the spotlight or to be labeled as a has-been, John continued to show his charitable, political, and entrepreneurial spirit in a myriad of ways. Back home in New Jersey, he grew his family and built his empire. Records continued to be produced through the 90s and the 2000s, but not with the same frequency or mass acceptance as their 1980s masterpieces. But that's just fine with John and the band. They have had a great life, great career, and will surely, although passed up time and again, be inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Someday. Out now, Bon Jovi is back with a new album. This house is not for sale. Pick up the record today with the link provided below in the description. That's it for this edition of Today in Music History. Thanks for joining us. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And share this video with your friends so they know we're out there. Thanks very much and we'll see you next time on Today in Music History. Seriously? You fucking kidding me?